Hey guys, it's Miss Carla, and today we're going to be learning about the violin, a wonderful stringed instrument that actually is the instrument that has the most in the orchestra. So when you play the violin, you actually have the body and you have a bow. Now let's talk about the actual violin first. Let's look at how many strings it has. How many strings do you see on the violin? One, two, three, four. So there are four strings on a violin. Now this is a full-sized violin, so that means it doesn't get any bigger than this. There are no instruments on the violin that are bigger than this instrument. When you look at the different strings, on every single violin you have four different string names. The highest one is the note E. The next one is A. Then you have D. And then you have G. The different parts of the violin are as follows. Up here you have your different tuning pins and you can turn them to tighten or loosen the string and change the pitch to make sure the instrument is in tune. This up here is a fancy little scroll. You know how they used to have instead of books the scrolls and they would wrap up the, the paper? Well this is the same idea and they have a scroll at the end there. This is called the neck of the violin and then here we have the front. These are the different F holes. Any instrument that is stringed and needs to produce sound that you don't plug in, like the acoustic guitar and the harp and the cello, has somewhere where the sound will come out of the actual hollow instrument. If I gently tap on this, you can hear that it's hollow. So here you have what's called the bridge. It kind of holds up the strings. Can you tell how that looks like a bridge on the instrument? Back here you have a chin rest. That's where I'm gonna put my chin. And here we have some fine tuning pins. Sometimes they have more of these. On this instrument, it just has one. And here, all of it attaches at the back. Let's take a look at the bow. When you look at the bow, you have some different parts of the instrument here as well. So you have the tip of the bow. The bottom part here is called the frog of the bow. And the, down here, you have something that will tighten and loosen this white stuff. Does anybody know what that white stuff is called? called horsehair. Can you believe that? When you loosen it, you can actually tell that those are actually different parts of horsehair, and that's how you make the sound. What you're gonna do is you tighten the horsehair on the, on the bow, and then once it's all nice and tightened, you hold it down here on the frog. Now you take lessons to learn how to hold it. You put your thumb in here, and these four fingers here, and then you learn how to put the violin up on your shoulder, and you take the bow and you run it across the strings to make the sound. When you run the string across here, the horsehair, across the string, it creates friction and vibration. So those are the four different open strings. If you want any other sound, you have to learn to put your fingers down on the instrument. Now this I told you was the largest violin. There's also much smaller violins and I have Lottie here to show us one of the much, much smaller instruments. Now this one is not her size. This would be for a very young student, but I wanted her to show it to you. Notice up here on the neck that there are pieces of tape. Now my instrument didn't have that because I learned where to put my fingers, but when you start off, the pieces of tape help you know where to put your fingers down. You do see it still has all the tuning pins at the top it has the bridge, it has the F holes, it has the chin rest, everything's the same. But look at the size difference, it's like a baby violin. Can you show us kind of where to hold it? And it also has a bow, and just make some different sounds on it. Yeah. So that one has a really fun sound because you have, and also one of the things I wanted to show you was on the beginning bows, sometimes we put little stickers where you put the kids' fingers so that they know where to do that. Great job, thank you Lottie for helping me. So let me finish up by playing you a fun song on the violin. When you practice and you take lessons and you practice every day, you can get good at the violin too. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.